What's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? We're going to get going here in just a couple of minutes. I'm just going to run a quick mic check here at the lower volume, make sure everything sounds good. All right, what's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? Welcome, welcome to Model Monday Live. Going to be a good one tonight, I think. Who do we got in here today? We got Sky Captain just tuning in to watch. I'm sorry, Nick, that you're not going to get a better show tonight. <laughs> but we'll explain what's going on here in just a minute. Uh, what's up, Ed? Thanks for tuning in. Ed from... Ed, where are you from again? Brazil? I know you're from somewhere in South America. Welcome, welcome. And Zachary F. is here. What's up? And CS, CTSUG users group. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up, everybody? We got a... We're going to do a turbo episode tonight. That's for sure. All right, let's see here. Good. Everything sounds good. Thanks, Zach. I hope that the volume is good. I hope that we got the magic levels right. Let me just do a quick audio check here. Sounds like maybe I'm getting a little too into the mic here. Let's clip it a little. Columbia, okay. What's up, Ed? Columbia. All right. And what's up, Chuck? How you doing? Welcome, welcome. And what's up, Ray? Thanks for tuning in. And 328, Yashwanth is here. What's up? Thanks for tuning in. I think we're good. Don't think I need this headset. It's cr cramping my style a little. All right, and Eric, it's been great chatting it up with you here a little before you get started. And Tamborora Station is here as well. And, of course, Cam is here as well. Welcome, everybody. Thank you all so much for tuning in tonight. Uh, it's going to be a fun show tonight for sure. And we're going to jump right into it. I know that I had originally booked this show as a uh, uh, tips and tricks session, but we're going to kind of truncate that a little and just focus on the modeling challenge. Um, and I'll explain why as we get into things tonight. So it looks like that does bring us up to nine o'clock. I think we're just gonna jump right into it here and say hello to everyone and get going with the modeling challenge. So let's jump right into it. Tonight is Monday, November 9th. We're gonna get a couple more winners onto the board here tonight. Uh, I know that I'm jumping <laughs> jumping right into things today here, but let's, let's just keep things moving along here. And uh, what's up 3167, thanks for tuning in. Great to see you in here. Um, we're going to do three challenges tonight. We're going to have one point for each of the winners, each of the first place winners in these challenges. And you can only win once tonight. So we're going to have three uh, three people get on the board tonight. They might be previous winners. They might uh, get themselves a little bit further up in the leaderboard, and that's fine. 
But as always, I want to remind everybody that if you're here for the first time, you know, welcome. Thanks so much for tuning in. And what you're going to need to, to participate is a YouTube chat login and a 3D CAD system that can input density and output mass. And as long as you got these two things, uh, you're going to be good to go. And the quick, you know, basic rules of this contest, the important rules are that this is meant to be fun. It's meant to be good spirited. It's just meant to, you know, give you a little bit of practice. Maybe you don't get to do models throughout the week. But just understand that I'll probably screw something up at some point. I'll probably have a bad dimension or a misspelling or something will be off. And if it is, look, we'll, we'll get through it together. Um, I think also on that note, what you want to remember is that, you know, these drawings are not to any kind of standard other than my own personal Toby standard. So, you know, if there's like a weird dimension or, or if there's something that looks a little bit weird on the drawing, like if, uh, if I don't call out symmetry or tangency or something like that but it's obviously meant to be symmetric or obviously meant to be a you know a, a three instance circular pattern or something like that just take it for what it is um if there's anything that is uh if there's anything that's like tricky or anything like that i will uh make sure that i always call that out on the print but for the most part i try to make them pretty straightforward all right enough enough yapping away here's your densities that you're gonna need uh, 3167 says, Toby, your glasses are sounding a little loud. Yeah, I'll bet that they are. They're really, they're cracking up tonight. Um, <laughs> uh, these are the densities you're going to need. If you're here for the first time, make sure that you've got these densities programmed into your library. Uh, maybe you want to just take a moment and create some templates that have these densities, and then you can compete in the, the next one. We're going to have three challenges tonight. Um, and if anybody is here for the first time, give us a shout out in the chat. We'd love to find out who's here for the first time. Uh, but with that, let's jump into it here. Let's do our first challenge, which this one is going to be called a light mount. Uh, this is something that I think you could use to mount a solar light or something like that. Uh, let's get into it here. Oops, my analytics just dropped to zero. That's kind of weird. I hope that our, our live stream is still going live. If you guys can hear me still, just say something in the chat. Like, we can hear you. We're ready for this thing. We're ready for this light mount. Let me just uh, refresh my monitoring system over here. My analytics just all zeroed out. It's not good. Yeah, it looks like I'm still live over here. All right, sounds okay. Sounds good still. All right, thank you, Matthew. All right, we're good. All right, thanks, guys. Thanks, Cam. That was weird. Yeah, okay. All right, all right, cool. All right, awesome. Thank you, guys. Sorry about that little delay. I know the anticipation is probably killing you. All right, here we go. This is the first one for tonight. <laughs> Okay, this is the first one for tonight. 3167 says we just got flagged for making too many bad jokes. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, go, model. Let's do it. So if you're here for the first time, uh, welcome, welcome. Take a uh, screen capture of this thing. Make sure that you uh, have a chance to look at it because I'm going to jump this off the screen here in just a minute. But this could, like I said, this is, I imagine this is some kind of a holder for like a, uh, some kind of like a solar light. That's what I like to think of. A light mount. You can see that those slots are going in perpendicular to that surface. So I guess that you can get the hardware in there. What's up, Clark? Thanks for tuning in. Monday night meetings for the foreseeable future to meet with the Australians. Good luck all. Clark, you got to make sure you let them know that December 14th you're booked already. Okay, we need you in the, the tournament. Say, I'm sorry, December 14th. It's an, it's an important holiday. It's an important date. We got to do the tournament. <laughs> All right. I think uh, hopefully that's enough time for everybody to... Get in there and get that thing screen captured. I'm going to jump back to the PowerPoint here. Three, two, one. Taking those three weeks, ideally. All right. Yeah, three weeks off. That's what I like to hear. Yeah. You got to prep. You got to build up your strength here for this big tournament that we're doing. Listen, guys, uh, I was originally going to do tonight as like a tips and tricks thing, uh, but my son is not feeling that well tonight. And so 
I'm kind of uh, on on his duty, uh, helping out my wife and making sure that we're taking care of him. So that is what happened today. That's why we're gonna we're gonna forego the tips and tricks tonight. Of course, if you do have any questions, let me know. Uh, I'll answer them in the chat. We can do kind of like a stump the chump, ask me anything. But uh, instead, I just want to take a minute here and advertise for some important upcoming events. Uh, so if you are doing the challenge, just feel free to listen in with an extra ear. And if you're just kind of tuning in, uh, if you were tuning in for some tips and tricks, look, I'll answer any questions you have. If there's something that's really bothering you in SolidWorks, type it into the chat and I'll answer it for you. I don't want you to feel like uh, you got bait and switched or anything like that. But uh, at the same time, I got to cut tonight's session a little bit shorter uh, because I got to get back up there and make sure we're taking care of taking care of the youngins. You know, if uh, anybody out there has kids, I'm sure you know how it is. Uh, sometimes this stuff just comes on you really quick. Uh, so with that all being said, I just want to remind everybody there's an awesome event coming up, uh, Slug Me 5, and that's the SolidWorks largest users group meeting ever. It's going to be on Tuesday, November 16th, starting at 6 p.m. East Coast, I think. Actually, I have a link here we can take a look at. We got this awesome, uh, got this awesome information. You can just look this up, Slug Me. So if you look up Slug Me SolidWorks on Google, you'll find the the links to this. It's you know it's being advertised all over the place, um, but you can see here. The, let me see if I can just jump into this. Let's see here. Oh, it looks like this is launching. What is this launching here? Edge or something? Okay, we're using Edge, guys. We're we're advocating for Edge here. Uh, so so let me uh, jump this onto the other screen here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All right. I love this browser. So, um, so you can see here that, uh, this is taking place on November. Or sorry. This was posted on November 2nd by my main man, Dan Wagner. Uh, so excited to see Dan in his new role. And as you scroll down through here, you can find out some great information about this event, uh, how to register, how to get into it. You can see here, there's also information here. It says, uh, click to join a user group near you. Click here to register for an upcoming event on meetup.com. So it's all kind of being uh, hosted through meetup.com. So just uh, if you haven't attended one of these users groups before, they're always awesome. But this one especially, they got a great guest here. Uh, none other than Eric Beatty, who's uh, you know in our chat tonight, superstar in our chat. But also um, Ed Eaton, who's going to be doing doing the helping you troubleshoot uh, when you're running into issues in the tree because the trees of blood. So I'm really excited to see that. I got to see a little piece of that at the World Conference, but I had to step out, so I couldn't see the whole thing. Uh, so I'm excited for a second chance to see that one. So um, be sure to tune in, and uh, that's going to be a great event, great virtual event coming up here on November 17th. And what's up, Matthew? How you doing? Uh, we're just uh, taking a look at some upcoming events here as people are going through and trying to complete the challenge. Um, another upcoming event, our good friend uh, Rob Maldonado, he does a thing called CAD Model of the Day. If you guys haven't seen this, it's just a cool, uh, every day he posts an image on his uh, Instagram or on Twitter, and it's... It's just a really cool thing that he's been doing for a long time. And he just crossed over the one year anniversary of this. So he did 366 models uh, because this year was a leap year. And it's uh, such a cool thing that Rob does. If you ever get a chance to take a look at these uh, CAD model of the day, you can look up Virtual Flat CAD. He's on YouTube, he's on Instagram, he's on Twitter, a lot of different social media. But to celebrate uh, the fact that he got through a full year, he's doing a live event on November 15th. Um, he's got it booked as 10 to 4 p.m. <laughs> East uh, East Coast, so I'm not exactly sure what all is going into this live event, but I'm sure it'll be pretty cool. Uh, Rob always comes up with some clever stuff, and he's got a great way of showing off tips and tricks also. So I uh, just want to give a plug to Rob here and CAD Model of the Day doing one full year. Every single day he's posting a new model. And he always does really cool like mechanical uh, mechanical models, mechanical designs, old parts, new parts, stuff that he just sees around the house, all kinds of cool stuff. And it's just a nice little way for me personally. I always uh, feel a little inspired when I see the models that he posts, the images that he posts. Uh, it's often, I especially like all the different movements uh, that he shows, uh, which he and I talked about this a lot when he was a guest on my show a few months ago, uh, but it's uh, definitely going to be a fun day, I'm sure. So if you're around on the 15th, be sure to check that out. Uh, be sure to check out this CAD Model of the Day live event celebrating one full year of doing CAD Model of the Day. You can see here one of the models that he did. This um, uh, looks like it's a, a mic, uh, and you can see that 
it's just an example of something that he'll do. He'll just see these different things and he'll uh, get in there and start modeling them up. All right, I don't want to give out the answer yet. Uh, I do see a couple of our speedy runners here are getting in and coming up with answers and uh, looks like they're coming up with the same answer. Uh, so congratulations. But I want to give some other people a chance just in case maybe both these guys got it wrong. So I'll give them a chance and I'll just kind of throw it out there again. If you guys, uh, if you guys out there have any questions, if you guys want me to go over anything in SolidWorks, you know, tips and tricks, anything like that, I'm always happy to. Um, if not, I'll just kind of uh, freewheel it here a little bit and show you guys some stuff that I think is always good. Uh, Ray says, when is Andrew going to be a guest again? Uh, I, I have been talking to Andrew and he has just been having a crazy year. And uh, I I know that he really wants to be on the show, and he kind of was like, let me let me know, you know, like I, I'll we'll figure it out, I'll make it work. But at the same time, you know, as a, as somebody who understands that timing is everything, you know, you I don't want to pressure him. I don't want to put more pressure on him because he wants to do like a full presentation. So I'm not sure if I'm going to get him this year or if it's going to be a little bit later. Uh, like maybe next year uh, that we'll get him, you know, early next year or something like that. But trust me, I've been talking to Andrew. I'm excited to have him on. He's excited to be on again. And he's just been uh, going through a really, really crazy year. So, yeah, indeed, Master of Surfacing, indeed, uh, Marcus, completely agree. Uh, the guy's amazing. He's taught me so much cool stuff when it comes to surfacing. So, um, uh, let's see here. These are too simple for Katia users. We need some complex surfacing. Cerberus, yeah, I like it, man. Problem with complex surfacing is that it's really hard to uh, define a, a print and then come up with an answer. Like, if you if you play that out, you know, if I was to throw out some crazy surfacing example, how would I be able to validate the answer in a text-based return? You know, maybe if I could get the models from people, I could, like, overlap them, be like, yeah, that's close enough. But when you're doing a text-based return on a surface, you know, whether you're doing volume or whether you're doing mass uh, either way you have to account for like huge uh, tolerancing and sometimes that's not optimal for an event like this so yeah it's a good uh, a good idea though I'm a I'm a surfacing guy myself I love surfacing so so what'd you get on this one Cerberus did you get it did you get it right uh, let's see here he said so I'm not even doing it it's too easy I got you bro it's all good surfacing similar to freeform modeling I mean, surfacing is, uh, in SolidWorks, you know, you certainly can do it that way, uh, Matthew. It's a good question. I should actually probably roll this chat over here so you guys can see what I'm looking at. Um, so Matthew down here says, is surfacing similar to freeform modeling? So, you know, freeform modeling, um, SolidWorks actually has a feature called freeform. Uh, if we go in here to insert features freeform. And this is kind of similar to, uh, like, subdivisional modeling, um, in uh, Fusion, I think they call it T-splines. So basically what you're able to do is you're able to take this geometry and you're able to break it up into uh, subdivisions. And uh, you're able to uh, then select those subdivisions and you're able to uh, grab points off of those subdivisions, which I don't even really need these points. I can just click on this and grab it. So I can grab a point off the subdivision and then just kind of push pull. So a lot of times, like I said, if you're using um, most CAD packages, they call it subdivisional modeling. I think in uh, I think in Fusion they call it something like T splines, um, but ultimately it gives you the ability to just kind of push and pull and create these kind of swoopy, lofty shapes here, um, you know, something like this. Uh, so that's more what I think of when I think of freeform modeling. But surface modeling is different because what surface modeling lets you do is it lets you create one single face at a time. So it's a lot of, uh, you know, you make one face over here, you make one face over here, you trim them together. Um, really, a lot of times what surfacing is, is it's, it's kind of more patchwork than anything else. Um, it's, you know, it's getting multiple faces to kind of all come together, uh, doing it for patchwork at least in a, a practical experience more than anything else. Of course, it is like when you need to make something that's all curvy, like a mouse or like a, a laundry detergent bottle or something like that. Uh, that's also another spot where a lot of times people will use surfacing. But, uh, you know, it, it just kind of depends on the application. But for me personally, a lot of times I end up using surfacing when I go to do something as a solid feature and I, I can't get it to work. And so then I'm like, oh, I'll just patch it together with surfaces. So it seems like in the real world, that's that's maybe a little bit more what it is. I don't know. If you guys are out there and you're surface, surface users, let me know if you agree with that. Or if you just say, no, I just want to model everything with surfaces. I don't even care. Just give me everything as surfaces. That's all I really want. 
Yeah, SolidWorks is an add-in power surfacing. Yep, um, I think that's a third party uh, that develops that. I don't think that's uh, in core. All right, here we go. 1.351 looks like uh, looks like Cam is the first one who got that. 1.351. Let's take a look at the PowerPoint and see if that's the answer that we got because I actually can't even remember if that's the right answer. But I think it probably is. Let's jump back here to our PowerPoint. Contest answer is 1.351. Congratulations, Cam. You did it, brother. You got back on there with another uh, another point. Let me just update your points here. So that's gonna move you into a tie for a second. And so those points that I'm referring to for everybody out there in the crowd who's watching, if you go to my website, which is uh, twotalltoby.com, here, I'll drop it over here. Uh, if you go to my website, twotalltoby.com, you're gonna see that there is a section called Model Monday Live. And on this section, uh, you can see Cam, I just updated you. Uh, Cam has two points here, so he's actually tied for second. Uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get eight people on this board here. Um, if we have eight people on this board, we're going to be in great shape for our Model Monday Live Winter 2020 tournament where we're going to have people going heads up, trying to win the big championship, the big, the big prize. I'm not even sure what the prize is going to be yet. We'll figure it out. I'm sure it'll be something amazing. So for each of these contests tonight, you're going to get one point. Cam got one point. He can't win again, unfortunately. Sorry, Cam. Uh, but great job getting that out of the way right away. No pressure anymore for you. Uh, and so we're going to jump into our second challenge here. And congratulations. Everybody give uh, Cam a GG. Good game to Cam. Uh, that's awesome that you got the first one there, Cam. All right. And let's see here. All right, I think we're good here. Let's move on to our second competition. So in our second competition here, you can see that we're gonna be once again using one of these materials. We always use these materials and we'll use these materials in the tournament. So if you make yourself a template that uses these materials, you're gonna be in good shape. Matthew says, am I gonna sing a new song at the championship? That's a great question, Matthew. Uh, I got some stuff that I have been uh, kicking around, you know, stuff about adding relationships. Maybe we'll figure out if we can do a new song. We didn't even really get a chance to do the full song last time at the users group, so we should probably do that at the championship as well. All right, Cam says, now I can open my beer. Yeah, cheers, Cam. I got a uh, Black Cherry Waterloo sparkling water. I'll cheers with you with this. All right, guys, here we go. This one's called Fitting 1105, our next challenge of the night. Three, two, one, go! Matthew Foe says, when's the new album coming out? I'll, uh, I'm having a, a, release, a release party at Tower Records on uh, December 15th, the day after the tournament. So if you've if you're got a local Tower Records you want to go visit, you can come to the release party of the new album. Matthew says, is there a cutoff on the leaderboard? Where if you get enough points that you're guaranteed to get in, you don't get any more points. Uh, that's a negative, Matthew. Clark is uh, more or less running away with this thing. And he he's going to probably get up into double digits before we're all said and done. Uh, so no cutoff. Uh, although, as we get closer to the final date, uh, I might have a night where we try to get all fresh winners. Uh, just to get some new names on the board. And um, a lot of times I like to have nine people. Uh, shout out to Jayo, who was our, our ninth person last time, our alternate uh, showed up at all the rehearsals and uh, was there to, or not rehearsals, but you know, the practice sessions to make sure the logistics all worked. Uh, so we're, we're going to try and get up to nine people, but I got a feeling on this one, this fitting, we're going to have a new person. We're going to, I think this is going to be the one where we get a new person on the board. All right, I'm just kind of reading through the chats here, making sure I didn't miss anybody. Congratulations, by the way, to everybody who got it uh, last time. Looks like, uh, Nick Hud got it, got it, uh, 1.3, actually a little bit high there, Nick, 1.37. Nick says, forgot the fillets. Yep, there you go. Ed, a little bit high, uh, made the same issue. Nick, 1.353, that I believe is within spec, nicely done. Uh, Jayo gets it in there, 1.355, also within spec, I believe. Uh, and Yashwanth gets 1.361, I think that was maybe just a smidge high. I think the spec was plus minus 5 thou. Uh, but definitely close and nicely done. Zachary, 1.1. 1. 1. 
Seven four, he was a little bit high there, or a little bit low there. Zachary also on the board already. Tower record, so I didn't have to Google it. <laughs> yeah, Matthew, sorry, that was a little, a little joke for us old timers here. All right, I'm gonna leave us up here for about five more seconds, guys. We're gonna jump back into, jump back into the PowerPoint here. I know this is a turbo evening. I appreciate you guys understanding. And I was gonna, I was considering rescheduling. I actually have a number of people from Europe who are asking me to do one of these on a Saturday night, or maybe do the next tournament if there is next tournament. Maybe do the next tournament uh, on a Saturday so we can go international. Uh, so that might be something coming next year. Um, I was thinking about using uh, using tonight and rescheduling it for a Saturday, uh, but. How to get these whole call outs. Uh, great question, uh, Sharon. Uh, I think, uh, Sharon, I think you were also the person maybe who had asked about whole wizard in one of the comments. If that was you, let me know in the chat and we can talk a little bit about whole wizard too. Um, and I'll show you how to get those call outs and I'll show you also how to use whole wizard uh, with those call outs, which is like a great way to save time on these contests uh, anytime somebody gives you a whole call out like that. So just let me know, Sharon, and I will uh, definitely uh, hit, hit you up with that info. So like I said, uh, we're doing one point per tournament, one point per, okay, it was you, all right, yeah, we'll, we'll take a look at that in just a second. So we're doing one point per, uh, per contest tonight, and those points are gonna get you on the leaderboard, uh, which you can see I already updated it, gave Cam that second point, moved Ivan up into second. Uh, so Cam has got two points as well. And it's weird to think that today is the ninth. That means we only really have like four more weeks until the tournament. It's crazy, right? Am I doing the math right? Me, five more weeks? No, four more and then the tournament. So uh, not that much time yet for people to get on the board. Uh, but we're not going to do like a seed or anything like that. I'm just going to do random names out of a hat again, just like I did last time. So I'll throw up a video once we get uh, the eight people. And then um, we'll, we'll draw their names out of a hat. And... Guess I'll have to figure out if, like, what, what the ramifications of Thanksgiving are as well. I haven't really thought this through enough, I don't think. I'll have to keep, uh, <laughs> to keep thinking about what's going on. All right, uh, but anyhow, yeah, then we're going to get everybody in here. We'll randomly draw everybody's names, and then we'll have a tournament like this. We're going to have live head-to-head -head action. We're going to see the contestants' screens. If you want to see an example of that, just go, go on back to uh, the previous uh, videos that we have up there on the channel, on the YouTube channel. You can see some examples of what it looked like when people were going head-to-head. -head. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it's very intense. came down to... The, the final round, uh, going all three rounds, going the distance. So it was, uh, it was pretty fun. So that's going to be December 14th. We're going to start at 7 p.m. East Coast. So I hope that everyone can make it 7 p.m. East Coast. And uh, let's talk about some other upcoming events, too. We got 3D Experience World coming up February 8th through February 12th. Um, there is, uh, this is on the website. So if you click in here, uh, to 3d experience world, you'll see this overview and you can see here. Oh, what's up Amos. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, that last show that we did was, was a great time. Thank you for saying so. We had an amazing guest with Danielle. Um, but yeah, you can see here that the 3d experience world is going all digital this year. So, um, you can register, you can get, you know, get your pass to attend some of these events. Now it says it's Monday through Friday, the 8th through the 12th, but the reality is that on Monday, it's just a day of certification. So you got all your different exams, uh, on Monday, and then you got your CSWE, the expert virtual networking event, which I am going to be at, uh, cause I have my expert level certification. Uh, so hopefully I'll see some of you guys there. And then you've got uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, which are like the, the awesome, amazing days where you really get to get in and find out what's coming next year from the general session. There's always, you know, a great, they always have great guests there during that general session. Um, and then you have all these different breakout sessions throughout the day. So you have the opportunity to tune in to, you know, like a, it's almost like a miniature tech day. You know, where you get to just tune in, go through the day, pick out which events you want to see throughout the day, tune in, ask questions to the presenters. Um, so that's going to be great. And that's going to repeat on Wednesday and it's going to repeat on Thursday. So, wow, I am, uh, you know, looking at 
here we go. So that's Tuesday. So like I said, uh, Monday is going to just be kind of like this certification day. Uh, and then Tuesday, you're going to have all this great content throughout the day, including these breakout sessions. So from 1130 to 415 on Tuesday, you're going to have all day to do these amazing technical breakout sessions. Uh, same thing with Wednesday, you're going to have all day to do these great breakout sessions all throughout the day. Um, and then same thing with Thursday, you're going to have the whole day to do all these great uh, breakout sessions. So um, wait, where's the breakout sessions for Thursday? Are there not any? It just says meetups. That's interesting. I'll have to find out about that. I thought that I thought there's I thought Thursday was another day of all the breakout sessions, but uh, whatever. I'll be there. I'll meet up with you guys. Whatever it is. And then Friday is uh, for resellers. So if you're if you're not working for a reseller, then this one won't be as interesting to you either. So really, it looks like the bulk of your of your week is going to really be focused around Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, so be sure to check those out, especially the general sessions. There's always good information in those general sessions, like what's coming down the pike uh, from the world of SolidWorks. And uh, uh, it's going to be, I think, a good time. So I'm looking forward to seeing everybody in there. I'll definitely be there. And hopefully I'll see you guys there. It is all virtual. So when I say I'll be there, I mean, I'll be hanging out in the chat. You guys will see me around there in the chat. And then the other thing I just wanted to remind everybody about is, um, uh, let's see here. Oh, that's all, that's all we're talking about. Huh? Okay. That's all we're talking about. Well, uh, for Sharon, I just wanted to take a minute here and just talk real quickly about Whole Wizard. I know some of you guys out there already know about Whole Wizard, but just in case you don't, let's say you have a hole like this one here. It says uh, 50 through one wall with diameter 122 and then a depth of 20. So in a spot like that, if you're working in SolidWorks, you know, just in general, when you uh, when you need to utilize a command like Whole Wizard, it's you know, it's always beneficial to kind of know a little bit about how a command like this works. So let's say um, we needed to put some feet on this thing. So let me go top plane, begin a sketch, orient my view. And then I'm gonna just drop in a center point uh, slot here. So here you can see we got our center point slot. This, this slot command is the one command that um, I don't auto dimension because it just always seems like it's a little bit finicky with me. Now, I'll be honest, I haven't like totally beaten up this command. So, you know, it's possible that I'm just missing something, but it feels to me like whenever I try to auto dimension in the slot command, I end up not getting what I want. Like it doesn't, it doesn't stick. It's really what it comes down to. So uh, let's say, you know, let's say I anticipate mirroring this foot across here. So I'm going to create a center line for the center to center dimension for the holes uh, to go across here. So I'm gonna go from this point to this center line. And then you can see I can get that double dimension. Even though it's not a revolve, it's just, I know I'm gonna be mirroring it. So I'm gonna bring that across and make that 90 millimeters. Um, and then I'm gonna take this guy here and make this 40 millimeters. And then I'm gonna say that my center to center in this direction is, let's say 140. Um, and then I'm going to go to my extrude and I'm gonna extrude that up to a depth. And remember, as soon as you go into the extrude command, the value is already highlighted. So you just don't don't touch anything. Like here I am in sketch mode, just press S key, jump into my extrude command, and I just don't touch anything. And then I just go right to the keyboard and type in 20, enter, enter, and then I have my extrusion. So don't don't like waste a lot of time going over here to the, the property manager and you know making a bunch of extra clicks that you don't need to make. So now I'm gonna go to the whole wizard command. So when I launch the whole wizard command, Usually what I do is um, I, I just kind of like eyeball it up here and get something close to what I want. So let's say I know that I want this to be anti-metric. I know that I want it to be a counter bore and I know that I want it to be close to an M8. Like, you know, it's not going to be exactly those dimensions, but it's going to be pretty close. That's usually what I do. So I'll pick a countersink or I'll pick a through or whatever, and I'll just kind of get it close. And then I click on this tab that says positions. And then what this says is pick a face where you want to create a 2D sketch. So it's basically saying like pick a planar face and I'm going to drop a 2D sketch on there. Or if you want this to be non-planar, pick a non-planar face. So if I want it to be non-planar, I can pick this face here. Now you also have a, a third option, uh, like an advanced option, which is you can actually right away say, I want this to be a 3D sketch. And then you can start picking on a bunch of different faces. So I'll show you that in a second. But for now, I'll say that I'm going to pick this face here. So now SolidWorks just put me into 2D sketch. What I'm looking at here is I'm looking at the red origin. You, you will not see that red origin unless you're in a, a sketch. Um, and it'll 
it'll look a little different if you're in 3D Sketch, but um, my point is whenever you see that red origin show up, that's when you know you're in sketch mode. Like if I pick this face, begin a sketch, boom, red origin shows up, right? That's, that only shows up when you're in sketch mode. So when I go to Whole Wizard, and I kind of eyeball this up and say, I want it to be a Seabor. I want it to be, um, you know, anti-metric. I always pick my units here first because, uh, it, you know, it just helps when you get down to that lower section. And then I want it to be close to an M8. And then I click positions. You notice I don't have the red origin because I'm not actually in sketch mode yet. But then when I click on this face, boom, look, now, the, now I'm in sketch mode. I haven't drawn anything. I don't have any points yet. But I'm in sketch mode and I'm in sketch mode on the face that I selected. So now I'm gonna be dropping in 2D points and I'm gonna drop a 2D point. In this case right here, I'm gonna wake up the center point and I'm gonna drop a 2D point over here. I'm gonna wake up the center point. And then I'm gonna go back to my type and I'm gonna make sure that everything looks good. And then I'm gonna click on this show custom sizing. And then here what I can do is I can say, I want the through hole to be 12 millimeters. And then I press tab, I go down and press tab on my keyboard. And then I want the um, uh, seabore to be 22 millimeters, and I'm gonna press tab, and I want the depth of the seabore to be uh, six millimeters, and I'm gonna press tab. So that's kind of how I like quickly rip through that. Now, if I happen to have that on the print, you know, and, and I know what it's gonna be, and, I, and you know, I've done it a bunch of times, then I can actually do that all in the first part and then go to the positions on the second part. I just think it's nice to, to kind of like map out where the holes are gonna be before I start updating the preview. Now, the other thing you wanna look out for is a lot of times down here, you'll have this near side countersink on by default, like uh, it's almost like it's on out of the box. And then that leaves you with a little chamfer around the head of the, the seabore. And most of the time in my contest, you, you, you don't want that. Um, in the real world, you know, whether or not you want that just depends on the print. But most of the time in my contest, you don't want that. So you wanna make sure that that's turned off. Uh, so yeah, you can see here, now we got our hole and we got our hole in the right spot. Now, I mentioned that there's that, that other kind of advanced option. So the second option for hole wizard is that you can click the hole wizard, go through and set up your size, click position, and then click a non-planar face. That's gonna give you a hole going uh, normal to that face. So you see that gives you a hole like that which is sometimes useful. And there's some other cool things you can do to um, kind of help align that. It always becomes a challenge, like how do you align that hole? So a lot of times what I'll do to align it is I'll create a plane uh, where I want that to be aligned. So yeah, for example, if I wanted this to be, you know, a certain distance off from the bottom, like if I wanted it to be 11 millimeters off from the bottom, I'll create a plane there. And then when I'm in that 3D sketch, uh, what I'll do is I will, take that point and hold control and pick the plane and then assign an on plane relationship. So now that point is exactly 11 millimeters from the bottom. I mean, in this spot, I probably could have just dimensioned it too. But similarly, um, if I need, you know, needed to have a plane at an angle, that's, that's often very helpful. Um, so for example, if I take this face, let me roll back before that uh, uh, whole wizard. If I take this face and this face and then make a plane, that's gonna be a mid plane. So it calculates the mid distance between those two surfaces. And then when I go to my 3D sketch for the whole wizard hole, it's on. It's currently on plane here for the height. And then I could do the same thing here. I can take this point and this plane and make that on plane. And then boom, I got that hole in exactly the right spot. Um, or maybe that plane was at, you know, created at an angle. Uh, when you're doing 3D sketching and adding dimensions, it can sometimes get a little bit cumbersome. Um, it's not impossible. It's, it's nothing you can't learn without a little practice, but sometimes if you don't have that practice already, this is a lot easier. You just make your planes, lay out your planes the way you want them, and then, you know, and then you're good to go. And then the final, uh, final option there is you can go whole wizard. So let's say again, I have the print. Um, so I'm gonna go in here to custom sizing and then off the print, I'm gonna say this is 10 and uh, for the through hole and this is 20 for the C bore and it goes down five millimeters. And then I can go to positions and then I can say 3D sketch. And what this lets you do is it lets you drop these holes onto all kinds of different surfaces. Now, this is kind of like uh, cool looking. I don't really use this in the real world. Uh, but it's kind of cool looking that you can do it that way. It's just usually by the time I get, you know, go through the process of fully defining a 3D sketch like that, I could have just done it in a few a few separate steps, you know, and I would have had something more robust and more reliable, but there are some advantages to this. And especially when you're on non-planar geometry, that's the way to go. So I guess that the final thing I just want to say to you is if you really think about what's happening with a whole wizard feature, What's really happening is it's a combination of a cut revolve and a point-driven sketch pattern. 
So a point-driven sketch pattern is one where you're able to get in here and, and create a bunch of points. So there's a bunch of points that I'm just going to create, just random locations. And then I'm going to take the right plane, I'm going to hold control, and I'm going to drag the right plane onto this point here. And then on that point there, I'm going to begin a sketch, and I'm going to create a sketch of a vertical line uh, coming right off of that point. It was supposed to be coming right off of that point. Uh, so a vertical line here that comes right off of that point, and then comes up, and then over, and then up and then closes off right at that point again. Uh, so there we go, so we'll make that right at that point. And, uh, and then of course, as always, we're gonna go through, we're gonna fully define this sketch, and then I'm gonna create a cut revolve feature. Okay, so there's uh, one of those holes, and then I'm gonna go to the command here called sketch driven pattern, and I'm gonna say, this is my point sketch, and this is my feature to pattern. So you can see here, it's taking that cut revolve and it's patterning it to all, where all those different points are. Well, that's exactly what Hole Wizard is doing in the background, right? If you if you go in and you look at um, the anatomy of Hole Wizard, it actually consists of a 2D sketch of points and a 3D sketch of, of um, oops, I didn't mean that. Hold on a second. Control Z, Control Z, went too far. I didn't mean to get rid of this one. Get rid of all these guys. And get rid of all these guys so if we so here's our boss extrude here's our our whole wizard what does this consist of well it's a 2d sketch of points so in this case i've got these two points here this point and this point here and then it's a 2d sketch of a cut revolve so there's your 2d sketch of the cut revolve there so a lot of times if you just think of whole wizard as doing it that way um of you know uh, it's just taking a cut revolve and doing a point driven sketch pattern. Sometimes it makes it a little easier to wrap your head around, you know, what's going on in that feature and what you can and can't do to manipulate it. So Sharon, that's for you. Uh, I hope that that helps. Uh, Sharon also says, where can I learn more about uh, surfacing design? So uh, if you want to learn more about surfacing design, I did do a live stream on that. You can check it out. It's called, uh, Beginner surfacing for beginners. It talks about both the concepts, like why to do surfacing, where to do surfacing, and then it also talks about like some real basics to help people get started. All right, and we got one, two, three, four, dot seven, two, three, one, six, seven. I think is going to be the winner there. The correct answer is one, two, three, four, five. But you are within spec, so great job, three one six seven. Give give three one six seven a GG there, and congratulations, Matthew. Hot on their heels, man. Nicely done. And let's see here, D -d 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 Sky Captain one two six two four. A little bit high there. You must have missed a feature there. Cam hasn't finished his beer yet. One two five two four. Getting closer. Totally misread the print and mirrored the counter bores. Uh, and then just did use delete face. Yeah, that's always a good one. Three one six seven. So he's saying that. Um, you know, like, let's say we do a mirror here. And then um, these ones aren't supposed to have the counter bore. Well, one way that you could probably get around that would be uh, doing a, a delete face. So insert face delete, or you can also get it from the surfacing toolbar or even from the right click menu. And then you do this delete and patch. And you can see that SolidWorks gets rid of the counter bore there. So if I edit that feature and say I also want to delete and patch here, you can see that SolidWorks gets rid of the counter board. Now, this is a good example of, you know, that earlier question of like, what is surfacing actually used for? I mean, a lot of times, <laughs> this is the kind of stuff that in the real world, at least me personally, guys, let me know in the chat, uh, you know, give me a one in the chat if this is what you end up using it for too. Um, if that, for some reason, if that delete and patch didn't work, if there was like a weird fillet or a blend or something on here that wouldn't let me do delete and patch, then what I would do is I would go surfaces, I would go delete face, I would say I want to uh, delete this face and this face, which turn this, turns this into a surface model. Then I would take this face here and I'd probably do like an offset surface at zero to make a copy of it. And then I would hide that copy that I just made. So let me hide that guy. And then I would um, do another delete face and get rid of this uh, to delete that extra whole, uh, cylinder there because I'm not gonna be able to remerge them if it's, if it's all part of the same thing. And then I would take this region here and I would perform what's called an extend surface. So that's gonna let me bring that out and kind of extend it properly. And then maybe here what I would do uh, would also be an extend surface. Like let's say that delete hole isn't an option here. Uh, so I'm gonna do an extend surface here, which is gonna make that uh, just a little bit extended in like so. So now you can see that I've got that kind of uh, overlap between those two. 
and then I would do a trim surface. I would probably do this as a mutual trim, but just to kind of show uh, what the thought process is here. And I would get rid of this little sliver that's here. And then I would do a trim surface. And I would say, this is my trim tool. And I'm going to get rid of this upper region here. And then I would do a knit surface to knit that new elongated cylinder back into the rest of the model so that those two are together. And then I would finish up by doing a thickened surface, which I always do the thicken as a separate command. I know you can do it in the knit command, but I always do it separate. And now I have thickened that back into a solid and, you know, patched up that region. You know, I love to, I would love to tell you guys that all I ever do with surfacing is cool, swoopy, lofty mouses and laundry detergent bottles and surfboards. But the reality of it is a lot of times that's what I'm doing. I'm in like a mechanical part there's a weird fillet blend and I need to get rid of it or, or make the part a little bit taller, a little bit smaller. And so I get in there and, and I use surfacing to patch it up if it doesn't work with like the simple tools. So if you guys have been there before, like I said, give me a one in the chat and let me keep going through here. All right, let's see what we got. Took a bit too long making the side plane tangent. Yes, that can get you there. Uh, let's see here. Cam says, love the direct editing tools. All right, and what is up, what is up? And Todd is here, what's up Todd? I don't think I saw you earlier, great job. Answer that one, should have been one, two, three, four, five. That's the same exact code that I use on my luggage. It's amazing. Okay, all right. Whoa, jump to the bottom. All right. All right, I'm gonna have to come back and read through these in a minute. Uh, I hope that, that helped to answer your question, Sharon. And thank you guys all for the great questions. And see you later, Matthew. I see that you're leaving too. Let me jump back to the PowerPoint here. We're going to take a look at our final challenge. And congratulations, 23167. I will add you to the board while I show the final challenge of the night. So let's get to the final challenge here. This one is called Pole Bracket. This is something that you might attach to a pole to bracket something else in place. <laughs> all right, everybody, here we go. Three, two, one, go. All right, let me get in there and add you, 3167. Congratulations, awesome job. Very well done. Let me know what you, what you use as a CAD system and what you want your badge to be, your nickname, your coat of arms, whatever it is. We'll add it in there for you. Guys, you know what this means. We got a new person on the board. Great job, 3167. That's awesome. I knew we were going to get a new person on the board this time. We did it. All right, we'll leave this one up here for just another minute or two. I'm reading through the chat here. I like how Sky Captain just keeps firing in with those answers. <laughs> and Taysir Almater. Nice job. Welcome to the party. I think a little bit outside of spec on that last one, but nicely done, nicely done. Cam says the old ABS PC. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, did I? Did I get it? I'm not doing ABS PC shenanigans, am I? Am I getting it wrong? Am I? Crap, I hope I'm not. You're making me nervous here. Or you were using ABS PC. Maybe that's what you mean. I hope it's not me. I'm going to have to go back and look at that one now. Cam, you're making me nervous. All right, I'm, flip I'm flipping this one back off. I hope you guys had enough time to look at this. Let's take a look. Okay. Whew. Scared me, bro. Thought you were saying I had it off. All right. I'm just kind of reading through the chat here as we're looking at this. And talking about the legacy hole. Is that you guys are talking about? Legacy options. All right, Sharon, no problem. I'm glad that that helped. Thanks for the great question. And we say goodbye to Matthew. Goodbye, Matthew. GG. 
And Eric says one, and Ed says one. Yep, you guys, you know you were there. I use SolidWorks, bad forever unemployed. <laughs> oh man, I don't think I, I don't think that's a good batch. I think we can come up with something a little bit better than that. All right, and you use SolidWorks too. Okay, cool. So we'll update that to say SolidWorks. And there we go. The the fastest updating leaderboard in the world of educational esports on Monday nights for sure. There it is. Nope. There it is. You're updated. You're on the board. A new person on the board. Congratulations, 3167. <laughs> Nick Nick says he's still he's still on the phone at work. That's awesome. All right, here we go. All right, this is this is the poll bracket. Yep, that's what we're looking at. This is a quick reminder, guys. Amos, uh, shout out uh, to Amos who reminded me we had a great show last week. We had an amazing guest, uh, Danielle Boyer. She is a Steam evangelist. She's trying to get out there and spread the good word of Steam to everyone. And uh, I just want to remind you guys that she is up for a contest where you can vote for her. And if you can get out there and vote for her, it's on L'Oreal Paris Women of Worth. Just go to the website, search the website, find Danielle, click vote now. That's all you got to do. You can vote every single day. Uh, Clark, you are back in time for the last one. Let me show you what that print looks like. There you go. This one's for Clark here. He's back in time for the last one. There you go, Clark. A lot of people got a got a, a head start on you, but I don't know, bro. You're pretty fast, so maybe you're gonna surprise us. All right, and let's see what else we got on here. Oh, and of course, the amazing SolidWorks users groups. Uh, if you just search Meetup or you go to Swuggin.com, you can learn all about the amazing SolidWorks users group. There's a user group event almost every night. So you guys can definitely check that out. Uh, always good information on those users groups. I always learn some amazing tips and tricks. I got to see Cam present the other night and learn some cool stuff from him. Cam, I'm, I'm going on to my second uh, Waterloo here. My second uh, Black Cherry Waterloo sparkling water. So see if you can, if you can keep up with me tonight. Just want to remind everybody that next week we got a special guest coming in. Semi-professional drone racer. Designs his own quads using SolidWorks. Designs different parts. Gets them printed out. Uh, get, you know, Makes custom parts. Has a project he works on called Parts of Old Planes. Uses the acronym. So, uh, definitely be sure to tune in next week. Uh, we're going to have... An amazing guest. And I have this on here as November Andrew, uh, but I don't know if we're going to be able to get him in here. So we're going to do our best. <clears throat> Excuse me. Beef Wellington. No, I did have uh, I did have a really delicious meal tonight, though, like I say. Feeling it with this seltzer water. Seltzer water. All right, here we go. Got a couple of people coming in with their answers. Want to remind everybody, December 14th, add it to your calendar. I don't have the live stream uh, posted up there yet, but uh, be sure to add it to your calendar. And I think we are going to go to our print here. If anybody has any other questions for me before I show the answer to this one, let me know. We got Nick and Zachary going head to head here, trying to come up with the right answer. Zachary says, "Forgot that cut. Yeah, that can be an easy one to miss." Cam says he's coming up with something even even different from these guys. So everybody's coming up with something a little bit different. Maybe it's not the right answer yet. You know, it's pretty tight tolerance. 
plus or minus two. Matthew coming in. 1450. Another, we got four or five different answers here on this one. All right, guys. Give you guys just another minute or two. Rightmost extrusion messed me up a bunch. Tell you guys what I was gonna say earlier. This is just a little, little reminder of some, you know, functionality that's been in the software for a long time, but it's always good to see see these things. When you got fillets in SolidWorks, they don't have to be symmetric. You can easily make them elliptical, which is, I think, pretty cool. So if I had a block like this, I can pick on these four edges here. You can see that when I pick on each edge, I can flip the direction of this profile. And look at that. It's kind of cool, a little elliptical fillet there. I don't know, maybe you don't think that's cool, but I think that's pretty darn cool. There's also these uh, conic, you have these options for conic fillets, uh, so you can get even more, I don't know what the word is, eccentric, eccentric, eccentric. You can get weird, we can get real weird up in here. So basically this gives it like a, a point, the closer you get to uh, zero, is that how it gets more pointy? Nope. The closer you get to one, that's how it gets more pointy. A conic is uh, you've got a cone in 3D space and you take a section line, section plane through the cone and that gives you your conic. And so the angle of that section plane relative to the cone gives you this profile shape, which is pretty cool. So this isn't using face fillet or anything like that, just using regular old plain Jane fillet. You can, you can get some pretty neat, neat little shapes here. Um, and you know, in the past, we could do things kind of like this in the past, but we'd often have to use some kind of a face fillet. But in the newer builds of the software, you don't have to do any of that, any of that stuff. You can just do it right in regular old plain Jane fillet. So I think that's pretty cool. I've used that a lot too to give me the geometry that I need. All right, we're getting some answers here. <laughs> Matthew says, Apple apparently uses G3 fillet instead of a normal one for their devices. Yeah, that seems like it makes sense. We can do that too. G3 is curvature continuity, right? Is that, is that what you get to with G3? Okay. All right, here we go. We got Nick, 1296. Nope, that's outside of spec. Zach, 1313. Nope, that's outside of spec. Zach, one, two, nine, seven. That's one pip outside of spec. So close. Nick, 1300. That's it on the nose. Nicely done. Zach, this is so close. I can't believe this, this came in so close and it was off still. One, two, nine, seven. It's 1300 on the nose, right? Let me look at that one. Oh, wait, maybe not. Maybe we're not going to look at that one. Look at this one. Let's see here. 1300. Yep. So nicely done, nicely done. Uh, very nicely done to everyone. Let's see here. Let's go back to our chat. So that one is going to go to Nick. Nicely done, Nick. Welcome to the two point club, I believe. That gets you up to two points. Nick had one before. He's going to be up to two tonight. Very nicely done. GG to everybody. Uh, let's see here. 1361. So a little bit high there, Marcos. Uh, but nicely done. Todd, 1445. A little bit high on that one. Uh, 328. Yashwanth. Very nicely done. 1300. Ed, nicely done. Marcos coming back saying, no, no, no. I'm not done yet. 1300. That's what it's got to be. Uh, let's see here. And 3167 got in there as well. And Clark, man, even with that late start, you were right there with everybody. Nicely done. And Taysir, just a little bit low there with 1293, just a little outside of spec, but nicely done. All right. 
forgot to fill it on the tightening tab. Yep, that'll do it. All right, guys, I got to go. Sorry to cut us short tonight, but I hope that everybody had a good time tonight. Congratulations to Nick. Congratulations to 3167 for getting on the board. And congratulations to Cam for cementing another point and locking in second. Um, feel free, you guys, to stick around. I'll leave the chat up for a little bit. I'll kind of come back in as I can. But I just want to say thank you all for tuning in tonight. I'm sorry it wasn't like a, a crap ton of tips and tricks, but I hope that you guys like that. Speed Cuber, I think, is a great nickname, 3167. I love it. I'll add that into the board. Um, I hope everybody has a good time to, had a good time tonight, and I will see everybody next week when we'll be back to our normal format with an amazing guest. So get back to our full screen here. Thank you all so much. I got this really cool uh, Tetris thing in the mail uh, from a, a good group of friends that I have. It actually lights up, but I don't have it lit up right now because it uh, it kind of messes with the webcam. So there you go. There's your special story for the night. I hope you guys like that. Uh, drop a one in the chat if you guys had a good time tonight. Thank you very much, Nick. Appreciate it. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Nick. Other Nick. Appreciate it. Uh, yep, will do, Cam. Thanks a lot. It was great hanging out with everybody tonight, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.